Hey guys, and welcome back to the next chapter in our Super Smash Brothers coding tutorial. If you're just joining us, you should probably skip back to part one, which you can find linked up above. Remember to subscribe and let us know what you think in the comments. Here's Ben with your tutorial. Thank you, Mr. Tomek. As it says on the video, this is part four of the tutorial, and this is the last part. So in this tutorial, we're gonna get everything done and we're gonna get our game working just like it is in the finished version. So, first thing we're going to do, uh, we're going to go over to our stage down here. If you guys remember from the last episode, we had everything working except our stage. Uh, we didn't have our, dis our stage displaying, we didn't have some of our little logos displaying, and we have to finish our game over and add in our rest of our characters. So, let's quickly start off with the stage. This is really, really easy code. We've already programmed our arena selection, so we already know which stage we want to select. Now we actually just have to make sure we display it. So we're gonna go into our stage that should have all of our rest of the code here, all this stuff which we already did in our last episode. We're going to zoom in like this. So we're gonna grab when we receive play. So whenever we receive play, that means we're gonna start fighting, of course. If map select equals one in an if loop here. So if map select equals one, that means at the very start, if we go over here, that means that they selected random. So here, map select, if map select equals one, that means they clicked random. So if it's a random, then we actually want to set it to a random number. So we're going to set map select to a pick a random number between 2 and 4. So pretty much 2, 3, or 4, and we're going to make sure it's not 1 because we don't want it to be random again. Then we're going to go over here, we're going to switch costume to map select, so it'll switch to any one of these costumes. It might be random or it might have been picked. We're going to set our size to 310. We're going to go to the back layer so we can't see it, or we, our, our characters are on top. We're going to go to these coordinates, and then we're going to show. So, let's see what happened. Let's go over here. I'm gonna pick random for now. So we go random, map select equals one. You know, link Kirby. And there we go. So it picked a random number between two and four, and it's now actually showing our arena. So now we have our arena in the background. It was really, really easy, like this. And I'll show you one more time, where instead we're gonna select, let's say, this one over here. So map select equals four. Uh, we're gonna be link and Kirby again. And there we go. So now we're in another arena. We know that's working fine. That's perfect. Um, now we can add in the next part. So the next part here, I'm gonna make a smaller screen, is to do these sprites down at the bottom here. Now it's actually a little red bar down at the bottom here and a blue bar. So these bars are gonna be able to click on it and we're gonna be able to change our name. They're also there so we can actually see our text. So we're gonna go to the player one name enter and we're gonna start our code in here. So first things first, Whenever we receive play, we're going to make sure we hide and stop all other scripts in our sprite. I'll kind of explain, or this will become much more apparent in a second, why we have to stop other scripts in our sprite, but of course we do have to hide it so that we don't see it. And that's of course whenever we're playing our game. Then also we're going to grab when we receive arena selection, we're also going to make sure we hide. So the last bit in the middle, as I'm sure you guys all saw, um, this is the part when we're actually setting up and switching our characters. This is really important in here. So we're going to have a small one frame delay over here before going to our front layer, then setting our size to 125%, and then going to these coordinates here. Now this is pretty important, going to these coordinates here, because it's going to put us in the exact right position, um, and then our letters are going to go on top. So I'm going to show you really quick over here. It's going to be blocked a little by our variables. In fact, I'll hide them in two seconds. But as you can see down at the bottom here, we actually have our bar just like that, and that's what we want. However, we actually want to be able to click and do stuff on our bar. So that's going to be pretty easy, like so. And then that's this big forever loop over here. So we're going to first take this guy out here and put the forever loop there. And then we have a little bit of code we have to do here. So first off, we're going to check if mouse down and touching mouse pointer. So what we did before for our back arrow, we're going to ask blank. So we're not actually going to ask anything because I don't, I don't really think the asking little bubble thing looks very good for the Smash Bros. So we're going to ask nothing and we're going to assume that they know what to do. We're going to assume that they know they want to re-enter their name. And then we're going to set play one name to whatever they respond. So that's really, really easy. Let's go over here. Like so. Like that. So there we go. Now we can click on this and as you can see it's going to give us a big bar. And let's say we want, I don't know, we will be able to input that. And then eventually we're going to get our little letter so that we can actually change our name. But we know that's working perfectly now, so we can X out there. There's one other thing I do want to change, and that's we're going to add this guy in here. We're going to repeat until length of play one name is less than nine. So we can actually just add this in right now. 
Um, and so long as the length of player nine, play, uh, of player one is less than nine, then this won't run at all. We're fine. But pretty much, we're gonna ask this blank thing over here again if our if we input like a really huge name above nine. So if input input a really huge one, it's actually if we let it happen, it was gonna it's gonna write all the way off of our screen, and it's gonna look kind of weird. So we're gonna limit the amount of characters to nine, so we can only put in uh, a nine character long name. And then once this runs, and we're gonna make sure it's gonna keep asking us until we put in a valid answer. And then after we're gonna broadcast this guy over here. Broadcast. Or we're gonna broadcast. Change name player one. Okay. So we're gonna add that guy in here. Really, really simple. Just this bit of code here. And it's actually very, very. It's almost identical for the blue bar over here. So if we click on this guy down at the bottom. It's pretty much the exact same. We have the same code here. You could just copy and paste. You can drag it all over into the player two. However, there are a few little differences. We're going to still set our size to 125, the exact same kind of delays, except instead we're going to go to these coordinates here, 173, and y equals 138, negative 138. And then also we're changing player 2 name. So now we're changing player 2 name to answer here, which player 2, and we're also checking for player 2's name here for our length. And then the last thing we change is instead of broadcasting change name player 1, we're doing change name player 2. So just a slightly different broadcast for player 2. So we have all this guy over here. Let's make sure everything's working fine. We'll go in like this and go here. There we go. So of course it's, it's blocked a little by our variables and I'm gonna turn them off in two seconds. But as you can see, we have a little blue bar down at the bottom. And of course, if we click on that, we can change this. I don't know, we'll change it to something weird um, like that. And as you can see, the variables up top have also changed. So we know our name is DH here because I just changed it. And this one over here, we're gonna put it to, I don't know, TH, I don't know. And that's player one name. So now we're able to change our name. We know that's working fine. Now we actually have to display our name. But quickly before we do that, we're gonna go up here. I'm just gonna hide some of our variables. We don't wanna be able to see these guys. Hide player one. We're gonna hide player one select. We of course covered this in the last episode. So we know we already know all that's working. And we're gonna get rid of those guys. So now let's quickly show you. Like so. There we go. So now we have player one and player two. I'm actually gonna quickly show you how we actually code the writing in. So right now you guys will not have the writing. I'm gonna show you how that works. Um, and once that all done, then we're pretty much finished the menu screen and we just have to do some in-game stuff. We are going to first exit out of the big screen and then we have this bit of code here. So we're gonna go to the one down at the bottom over here. So it's called display name. And then we also have display name two at the bottom. Okay, so we're gonna use both of these little guys over here to actually display our name. And for the costumes inside, it took a while, but I added in every single letter of the alphabet in uppercase, and if we look all lowercase, as well as a bunch of different numbers. So all the numbers one to zero, all of them are in there, and then all lowercase stuff there. I also added in question mark, and then a space. So this stuff is a lot more complicated. Um, there's one little issue over here. This should not be U2, it should be V. We have to make sure all the costume numbers all the costume names stay the same as what the letter because we're going to be using that a little later on but we have all those guys working fine um, and all these costumes if you want to see more of this make sure you go check out other previous tutorials and we went into this a lot more in depth um, but we're going to code some of this and I'll explain it more later so first things first whenever we receive overall start we're going to make sure we hide because again we're going to be using clones like we did for almost everything else in this game so we're going to use clones and we're going to hide our original one then we have this bit of code over here. Whenever we receive setup, we're gonna wait 0.09 seconds before going to the front layer, setting our size to 70%, and then waiting 0.1 seconds before we broadcast a really important message, which we did before, and that's change name player one. So whenever we receive this message, and we're gonna code that just over here, whenever we receive this message, we know we wanna change our name. So we did it at the start, and we're, we're doing it at the start right here, because we actually wanna be able to type out our name. So whenever we wanna type out our name, so if we change it or anything like that, we're gonna make sure we broadcast this so that we can do this stuff over here. So whenever we wanna redisplay our name, so maybe something's changed, or maybe we're just displaying it at the very start, this is what we're gonna to wanna to do. We're gonna to go to these coordinates here, negative 102, and y equals negative 139. That's gonna put us right in the bottom, right on top of our little blocks over here, our little triangles, our triangles, our little rectangles. I don't know why I said triangles. Then we're gonna set count letter to one. This is just like a placeholder variable, kind of like that. It's gonna be just counting from one all the way up to however many we have to go. And then we're gonna use this loop over here. We're gonna repeat length of player one name. 
Um, and what this is going to do, let's say player one name is Ben, for example, okay? It's going to run through like the player one name, so it's going to run through this whole loop three times. So that's how many letters are my name. And then what's it going to do? It's going to switch to costume count letter of player one name. So count letter is going to start at one, so it's going to position one of Ben. So in this case, it's going to be a B. Now let's say we go over here and we're going to be increasing count letter. So we're going to increase it each time. And of course, after we increase it, now we're going to go to position two of player one name, which is Ben. So the second time it's going to be two. And then the third time uh, it's going to be N. So B E N and it's going to spell it out just like that. And of course we're switching to that costume and it's really important. We're doing this here because it's going to give us the letter and that letter of course corresponds to what we just did before. So it has to be a capital C and say a lowercase c over here, if I can find it. So a lowercase c here and capital up here. So it's really important, really case sensitive, and it's going to match it to the exact costume. So the exact name of the costume. But quickly, we also have to do that. We also have to make sure we show so we can actually do our costume and stuff. But we're going to make sure we create a clone of ourselves to do that. So we're going to create clones of ourselves. And then quickly over here, whenever we start as a clone, we're going to make sure we show. So we can actually see our clones. And then the last thing, we also want to make sure that all of our clones aren't like all mumbled up in one spot. So each time we create a clone, we're of course going to increase our X position by 10. So exact same Y position. That way we're going to create one clone over here. And then when we say put down our B here, we're going to go over 10 spots and then put our E down over here. So we're going to keep increasing our X position by 10 each time. And then the last bit of code I have in here is we never receive change player one name. We're going to delete all of our clones. That way we don't have like five words on top of each other. So let's make sure this all works. We have this bit of code here. It's only going to work for player one because this is the player one. Um, but we'll code player two in just a second. Let's go here. There we go. So we have our player one, which is already working. We're going to set it to Ben. There we go. And now it's reset it just like that. And as you can see, it's gone to the right costume and then it's increased its X position by 10 to then make the next letter. Then it's gone again, increase it by 10. And of course, these are a bunch of different clones and we've gone to the right position. Everything is working fine. If we click on it again, we can change it to, I don't know, Mr. Tomac, something like that. But of course, it's not going to let us do Mr. Tomac, I don't think, because that's, oh, it is just, we can do Mr. Tomac, but we can't do something really long and it's just going to make us redo it and go over here. Okay, so that's working just how we need it to. Now we actually quickly have to do player two. So it's almost the exact same thing if we go to the second one over here. As you can see, pretty much the exact same thing. Uh, whenever we receive overall start, we're going to hide. Exact same thing. Whenever we receive change name player two, we're going to delete the clones. So that way we don't have all mumble jumbled like I said before. Whenever we start as clones, we're going to show. Exact same thing over here. Like literally copy and paste from before, except we're going to broadcast change name player two. So exact same thing just for player two. And we can also go over here. Again, change name player two. Instead, we're going to go to these coordinates here. 135 and negative 139. We're going to use a different variable. It's called count, but it serves as the exact same thing. We could actually just do two private variables. I'm not sure why we didn't, but it doesn't matter. We're going to use count here and we're going to check length of player two name. And of course, letter count of player two name. We're going to create clones of ourselves. Exact same thing. And of course, we're increasing our exhibition by 10. So let's make sure that's worked here. Let's go like this. Perfect. And now we're going to set this to Ben and we're going to set this to, I don't know, Tomac question mark. Perfect. Now we can also add in spaces, I might add. Um, and that's also, if we go over here, because I added in the space part at the very end. So again, it's, it's really, really case sensitive the way this works. So this guy here is literally just a space. I inputted it as the costume number. And because of that, it's actually going to use that as a costume. So it's pretty cool actually. Um, but we have all this code working now. There's still a bit left we have to do, but that's definitely a good start. So to finish off the menu screen, we're going to go over to this guy over here, random down at the bottom, right, right above on top of my face over here. And we just have one costume and this guy over here is just going to display whenever we go to click on, whenever we click random on our select screen, we're just going to have this thing display rather than a character because we can't have a character. So we're going to go over to our code. We have these two little bits up here. Whenever green flag is clicked, we're going to hide. And then whenever we receive play, we're also going to hide. So two really easy bits. And then we have the main bit of code over here. So whenever we receive setup, so whenever we're starting to select our, our characters and everything, we're going to set our size to 35%. Then we're going to create a clone of ourselves. Now, the reason we create a clone of ourselves is because if you guys remember, two people can be random. 
So we can have two people be random, but that creates an issue if we only use one of these things. So our other little clone over here that we're gonna use, that's for our second thing. So this guy here is gonna be for player one, and this one here is gonna be for player two. And as you can see, it's pretty much identical code. So we have a when we start as a clone for player two, and then we're gonna continue this part here, this is for player one, if player one select equals six, so we covered that in our last episode, if they clicked random, this means here, we're gonna make sure we show, and then we're gonna to go to these coordinates right here, negative 186 and negative 115, if not, then we're gonna hide. And then we have the exact same thing over here, we have different coordinates, the same y coordinate, and just we're gonna to go to x equals 65, and then we're also checking for p2 select. So that's our little random chip over here, super, super simple code, now let's play over here, so now we go. So now we have our little random chip over here, and of course two people can be random. So now we have two little chips. Um, of course we could do it however we want. We could have link and then one random. We could have player one be random. Honestly, it doesn't really matter. Of course we still have to do Kirby, and I'm going to show you how to do all of that in just a sec. Um, now we're going to quickly finish all of our in-game stuff. So to start the in-game stuff, we're going to get some of our little live counters things. So. I had it here before, all displaying. I don't actually just want a little variable thing like this here, uh, just like here. And I don't want it to say, oh, you have three lives. I want to make it kind of fancy, just like the real Smash Bros. So we're going to have little icons, and we're going to use them to display how many lives we have. So for that, we're going to go down to the little sprite. It's just on top of my head over here, um, down at the bottom uh, over here. It's called lives. Right now it's link, a little link, little face emoji, little face here. And if we look in our costumes, we have a bunch of different characters. These are all of our characters. We have Link, we have Kirby, we have Pikachu, we have Bowser, and of course Mario. So we're going to use all these little guys here. And of course we have one for player one. And then also we have another sprite down here for player two, which is the exact same costumes. So let's start the code for this guy over here. So whenever we receive play, um, we're going to go to these coordinates here. We're going to go to negative 20 and then y equals 150. This all, we're going to make little menu things down at the bottom. We're going to do that right after with a lot of the sprites that are actually covered up on my head. So we're going to use all of them and we're going to make it all look all fancy and stuff. But for now, we're just going to go here, use these coordinates, um, and it'll look better later on. Then we're going to switch to costume player one select. So again, player one select is going to be from one to six, depending on which character you pick. Or yeah, one to five, my bad. One to five. Um, and either one of them is going to switch to any of the, the costume number. So let's say we are costume number three or we're person number three, we're gonna be Pikachu, and we're gonna to switch to this costume here. So pretty easy, then we're gonna set our size to 30%, and then we're gonna hide. So the reason we're hiding is because just like before, just like with our little display icons, we're actually not using the real thing, and we're gonna use clones of ourselves. So we're gonna hide the original one, and then also just like before, we're gonna use another variable called counter, and we're gonna set that to zero at the start. And then also just like before, a lot of patterns, we're gonna repeat for player one lives. So right now we have we have player one lives set to three. So at the very, very start, if you guys remember, we went over here and we set player one lives. This is in the first ever sprite we coded. We set it to three. So we're gonna keep it at three here. Uh, let's go back to our lives over here. And so in other words, we're gonna repeat this three times. Then each time we're gonna change counter by one. So it's gonna go one, two, and three. And then also each time we're gonna create a clone of ourselves. Again, just like before. It's the exact same thing. We're also doing the exact same thing over here. Except this time, instead of increasing our X coordinate, we're gonna be increasing our Y coordinate by 20. So just like over here, if you guys remember, we did this, the go to, and then we increased the X coordinate just for our writing over here. We're doing the exact same thing. Now we're increasing our Y coordinate, our Y position by 20 instead. So we're going upwards. So we have all of our lives like that. We're gonna go one, two, three, three lives. And then we have our three clones. Each one of them have a number. So they have one, two, three. And we're going to use that number and we're going to save the number using a custom block over here. So whenever we start as a clone, we're going to use delete. So we're always going to checking if we're deleting or not. And then we're going to use counter. So right now we're going to have three lives. I'm going to disconnect this for now, show you, make sure this works okay. Like so. Actually, hold on. It's not even going to show. Hold up. We have to go back here. We have to make sure we show our character just like that. Now, now it should work. So now if we go into our game like this. We'll go over here. Let's go Link Kirby. There we go. So as you can see, we have Link. We have three different Links and then three different Kirbys just like that. And now all we want is these things to disappear. So let's say Link dies. We want these little dudes over here to disappear slowly as we die until we have none of them left. So those are our lives little setup. You also might notice that we have the player one and player two still written there. We're going to fix that all later on. 
So we have those guys there. Now we're going to want to be able to detect when we die or not. So we're going to do that using this little fancy bit of code over here. I say fancy, it's not fancy at all. So again, we're going to use a forever loop just like that. And then if player one lives, subtract counter. So if you guys remember, this is almost going to run three times this thing over here, depending on each one. So each one of those little icons is going to be running this code at the same time. And each one of those little icons have a number from one to three. So let's say we are the top icon. We have the top icon, that means counter equals three. So it's gonna stay like that. We know that player one live subtract three, so three subtract three equals zero. So we know this code is never gonna run. But eventually, when player one lives equals two, so if we die, then two subtract three equals negative one. So eventually when we die, this loop is gonna be activated. So what's gonna happen here, it's gonna repeat 10 times. We're just gonna change the brightness effect so it slowly fades out like that, or it's gonna, it's gonna look weird. It's gonna like fade all the way to white and then we're just going to delete the clone. So that's really easy. Um, and of course, this is going to keep on running. Let's say we are at counter two, so it's a little second icon in the middle, and we're going to wait till our player one lives equals one, and then the counter uh, player one one subtract two is going to equal negative one, and then the code's all going to run. So let's show you how some of this works over here. Um, we're actually going to have to play a little bit. So we'll go over here, like so. Uh, we're going to have Link and Pikachu. One little thing, Pikachu is really broken in this game, so you may not be able to see right now, but we're gonna kill Link really quick. So let's get Link to die, there we go. So as you can see the little thing over here, the Link icon slowly disappeared, it went all white, and it disappeared. And of course this is gonna keep on happening if we kill Link again, another one's gonna disappear, and another one until we're all out of chips. So that's working fine just like that. The only other little thing I wanna add down at the bottom is a little bit of foresight while we're still here. Whenever we receive game over, which is a broadcast when the game is completely completely over, so if someone's won, then we're going to use this over here. We're going to stop other skips in our sprite and then delete all of the clones. So the last thing we're going to do right here, quickly to do with the lives, we also have, this is only for player one lives. Now we have to do player two. So it actually showed up here because I've already connected all the code. It's the exact same thing. Um, we're using different coordinates. So we're going to go to these coordinates here. That's pretty important. 183 and then negative 150. We're gonna to switch to costume player two select, not player one. And of course we're using counter again. This time I'm pretty sure, yeah, I used I used private variables. Um, so each one it's the same name. However, they're different variables. So they each have their own one. So if we display counter, it's gonna be lives for counter. So they're, they're private variables, makes things much easier. Then we're gonna change counter by one and we're repeating for player two lives, which is also gonna be three. And we have the exact same thing, increasing the Y position, exact same thing. Except now we're checking for player two lives subtract counter. Exact same thing, exact same thing. So that's, I've already shown you that. That's with both of the lives working. Now we have to get some of our little logo things working, but we're almost on our way. The rest of the code is pretty easy. And then we have to make the rest of our characters, which is gonna be a little more complicated, but still really easy. So for the logos, we're gonna go to our next sprite, which is this little Triforce little dude over here called logos. And I'm gonna show you the costumes for this guy. So inside here, these are like the little background logos that we're gonna be using. Um, I'll show you in a second. And we have, of course, red for player one and then blue for player two. And we have one for Link. Oh, sorry, this, this is player two, this guy's player one. Ah, yeah, mixed up. Either way, it doesn't matter. We have stuff for player one and for player two. Uh, we have all these red ones over here. And then we have these guys here um, for the other person. Uh, we're, of course, we're using the same one. Bowser and Mario are gonna share the same guy. It doesn't really matter. Uh, we have Pikachu Pokeball, Kirby is a star, and then Link is a Triforce. So we only are actually going to be using one sprite, so we're not going to use a player one and a player two. Because it doesn't have to do much, we don't have to detect anything. It's going to be super simple, and we're just going to create a clone. So up here, we're going to, when we receive overall start, we're going to hide. And then also similar to before, whenever we receive game over, we're also going to hide. Then we have this bit of code over here. So whenever we receive play, we're going to make sure we show point in direction 90 degrees. This one doesn't really matter too much, just in case it gets turned or something. We're going to set our size to 40%, and we're going to set our ghost effect to 30. So the ghost effect to 30 is just so it's not fully in your face. It's going to be a little faded away. I think it looks much better that way, um, but not, not too much. Then we're going to go to these coordinates here, negative 50 and y equals negative 100. That's going to put us down in the bottom left-hand corner of our screen, kind of where the Chromeworks logo is right now. And then we're going to switch to costume player one select. So let's say player one select is, I don't know, let's say they're three. So that means they're Kirby. And of course we use this variable a lot. Of course it's going to correspond, uh, not Kirby, let three, three is Pikachu. So it's going to go here and we're going to use this costume here. 
Now for player two, it's a little bit different. Whenever we create a clone, we're gonna create a clone here. We're gonna go to these different coordinates, which instead of x equals negative 50, x is gonna equal 150. We're gonna switch the costume player two select plus five. So let's say player two is Kirby, so it's a two this time. We're gonna add the five because we have to skip these five costumes beforehand. So we're gonna go here. We know right now over here, player two select equals two plus five. So we are gonna switch to costume number seven. So one, two, three, all the way down to seven. And what do you know, we get Kirby. So we're gonna skip those five and then add whatever player select is. So that's gonna work here. Let's make sure everything's working fine. This is super easy code. We'll go in here, start playing. Boom, boom, boom. And we'll go Link and Pikachu, why not? And there we go. So as you can see, it's kind of hard to see here, but we have a red Triforce here. And then we also have a Pikachu logo, just like that. So we have both of those guys. I said Pikachu logo. It's, it's a Pokeball. We have both of them like that. That's working fine. Um, it does show up a little better. My favorite map to do, I don't know why I'm saying this, but it's the Pokemon Arena here. So let's go these two. And we can see it a lot more clearly here. We have the little red mushroom and it's faded out a little bit. And then of course we have a Triforce over here with our lives. So it's starting to come together now. We have to add in some of our health stuff. Um, we want to actually display our name a little bit better. And we also want to um, add a little icon in. But all that stuff's pretty easy. Um, so let's get going on. Starting with the border. So the border is almost hidden by my face. It's like right over here. So we're going to click on this guy over here. And then we have this bit of code over here. So whenever we receive play, we're going to go here. We're going to make sure we show. We're going to point in direction 135. So if I click on this, it's going to point us in that direction here. So it's going to put us on a slant like that. So if you notice in the actual Smash Bros, the icon's actually on a tilt. So it's not just going to be a square. We're going to tilt our little surrounding box. Now, of course, the border here, all it is, we have two costumes, player one and player two, and it's just the little background boxes. Then we're going to set our size to 50%. Again, we're going to set the ghost effect to 20, so it's, it's not completely in your face. We're going to switch to player one costume. We're going to go to these coordinates here. Uh, negative 160, negative 135, and then create a clone of ourselves. And of course, the clone is for the second player. So this, of course, is for player one. And then we have to do player two. So we'll find the little dude over here. Whenever we start as a clone, this bit of code over here. Whenever we start as a clone, we're going to go to these different coordinates. We're going to go to 44, and then again, negative 135. And of course, we're still going to be pointing in that direction because we created a clone all the way at the bottom. But this time, we're going to switch to costume player two. Now the only other little bits are the exact same as I had before. Whenever we receive overall start or game over, we're going to make sure we hide. So let's go see how it is. This is a super easy bit of code. Um, it's just show you quickly what the, the coordinates and stuff are. So it doesn't matter. It's always going to stay the same. And now we have our two little boxes. We have our little red box and our blue box. And we can kind of see through them a little. Um, that's perfect. Now we have to put our icons on top. And again, that's going to be super easy. Um, we have not much left. In fact, let's get cracking. Let's quickly finish this little part and that little part is We got here is this little in-game icon down at the bottom. So this time not covered up by my face um, We're gonna grab this link thing over here and of course these costumes here are the little icons We're gonna be using so we have link which is labeled one Kirby two Pikachu three and I'm sure you guys get the idea by now We have all of them there and then we have a little bit of code as you can see this code around here is really really easy all it is, it's literally copy and paste from before. We're just going into these certain coordinates. So whenever we receive a green flag, we're gonna make sure we hide. Or whenever we receive game over, we're gonna hide. And then very similar code to what we did before. Whenever we receive play, show, set size to 39%. We're gonna point in direction 45. So here, it's gonna point us in that direction. So again, same, same tilt. We're gonna create a clone of ourselves. So this clone over here. Now, of course, this is for player one. This is for player two. So player one's gonna go to these coordinates here, negative 161, negative 136. And when our clone's going, so for player two, we're gonna go to 43 and then negative 136. And then again, the exact same thing, we're gonna switch to costume player one select and switch to costume player two select for player two. Now we don't have to add five in this case because we know two people can't be the same thing. So one, they're both not gonna to get to the same costume and two, we only have the five costumes. So it doesn't really matter. We don't have a red and blue distinction. It's just the same thing. So. They're super easy. Let's make sure everything works. We'll zoom out a little bit there. Go like this. And here. And let's go Link and Pikachu. There we go. So as you can see, now we actually have a Link icon and a Pikachu icon down at the bottom. It's actually starting to look a little cooler now. 
uh, we're getting most of our things done. There is one other little little thing I want to add quickly, and that's this guy over here. So we're going to go down to the bottom, right next to our thing over here, and we're going to add in some of the code here. So whenever we receive play, we're going to go to our front layer, and this code, I should probably explain what it is. We're going to go to our costumes real quick. This part here, we're actually going to use for our ready go. So I don't know if you've played the full version, but we want to put ready and then go, so, uh, if I can click on it, and go. So that's just when we're starting. We want it to be really, really big in the middle of our screen. And then later on, we're also going to uh, program in when it says game, so when we're finished. So for our code here, it's pretty simple. Whenever we see play, go to the front layer, set size to 80%, and switch costume to ready. So ready is over here. Then we're going to go to these coordinates here. Y is going to equal 100, and X is going to equal 0. It's going to be in the middle of our screen, and then up a little bit. We're going to show. We're going to wait one second, and of course, when we're showing, it's going to be ready. We're going to have a little delay. Then we're going to move down a little, and then we're going to switch to go. Wait one more second, and then hide. Of course, when green flag is clicked, we're going to hide. So let's let's see what that looks like now. We go here. Boom. All ready? So we go here. Perfect, just like that. So it appeared there. It's also timed up pretty well, so we'll actually, the announcer will say it at the exact same time, which I think is pretty cool. We have that part there working fine. Now we have to finish up adding in some of our health and little bits and bobs like that. So for the health, it's actually not as complicated as you might think. We're gonna zoom out really quick and we're gonna go to the health. Now, this one is the first one that's actually covered by my big face over here. So it's gonna be a little health counter down at the bottom. Um, and right now it's just gonna be at a 0%. You can eventually click on it, it's called health counter and some of the costumes. Pretty much we have all of these costumes in here and it's for 10, for 20, for 30, 40. And it goes all the way down and slowly gets darker all the way to 150. So we have all these little counters in here, like so, and now we're gonna add in the code. So these are our little bits of code that we have to add. So whenever we receive overall start or game over, we're gonna hide. And then whenever we receive play, we're gonna have a little bit of a delay before going to the front layer so that we make sure our health counter is always pretty much on the front layer. So we've added in those little bits over here. Now we have to actually add in and make it so it actually counts and uses our health. So whenever we receive play, we're gonna set our size to 45% and then create a clone of ourselves. So we're gonna run these two bits just like we always do, it's the exact same thing. This of course is for player one and then this of course is for player two. So of course we're gonna to go to different coordinates. They're gonna be the same Y coordinate, negative 126, but our X coordinate is gonna be negative 59 for our player one and it's gonna be 140 for our player two. Then we're gonna run this bit of code in here, which is the exact same thing, except this one here is player one health, and this one here is player two. So for now, I'm just gonna connect this, and I'm gonna explain this bit over here, but it's the exact same thing. We're gonna keep switching to the costume, player one health divided by 10 plus one. So player one health divided by 10, I'll explain the plus one in a second. So our player one health is gonna be uh, like that. It's like, let's say it's zero at the start, we're gonna divide it by 10, um, so it's going to be zero, of course, divided by zero, and then we're going to add the one. I'll explain that in a second. So we're going to keep it at zero. And if we look at our costumes, our costumes aren't actually like it's. We didn't change it. I could change it. We could change it to ten and things like that. Um, but we're just having it four, five. So all we're doing this divide by ten is because our health is like fifty, for example. We're dividing by ten to make it five. So our costume is costume number five instead. Okay, really easy. And then we're also gonna add in the little one over here, like so, and we're adding in that little one because we start at zero, so it's zero, so we have to add in that extra little one. So now we can connect up this guy over here, and we can run our code. Let's make sure everything's working. We'll go here, like so. Link, curvy, oh, curvy. I'm really confused today, aren't I? So now we have our health down at the bottom. Right now, of course, it's at zero, and if I go and smack Pikachu, it's gonna increase by 10. And I can keep going, and it's gonna go all the way up until, oh, we killed him already, okay? So we know our health is working now. Now all we have to do for our little in-game stuff is add in a little text at the bottom that displays our name, which is actually really, really easy. Um, let's get that working. So we're gonna exit out of our full screen. Okay, this guy down over here, also covered up by my face. So this is a little sprite, it's called Display Border. It's right next to the health sprite. It's right over and it's like right next to the border and in between the health and the border. It's that guy down here. And if we go to our costumes, all it is is just, uh, it's just a square, okay? Really, really easy, or a rectangle. And we're gonna do some of our code in here. This is the easiest code out of the whole thing. Whenever we receive game over or overall start, we're gonna make sure we hide. 
and then we have a little bit of code in here. Whenever we receive play, we're going to show, we're going to go to these coordinates here, negative 75, and y equals negative 157. We're going to set our ghost effect to 20, so it's, it's not fully visible, it's a little bit faded, just like before. And then we create a clone, and our clone's going to go to 130, negative 157. So again, for player 1, and then this bet hurries for player 2. So this part is really, really easy code. Now if we run it over here, as you can see, now we actually have it. We have player one and player two. So it's actually displaying our names, but we do have to have, we have to actually code some of this in now. Right now it's probably going all weird for you or it may not be showing at all. So we actually have to fix this here. So let's go over here. We'll go out here. And now we're gonna go to our display things over here. So the little sprites we used just before, we're gonna go over here and we're gonna add a little bit more code. So this is the part we already coded. Now we're just gonna add in this little bit over here. This one bit over here, whenever we see game over, we're gonna make sure we delete all the clones so we can't see it anymore. Um, of course, that's when we finish and we die. But when we're actually playing the game, whenever we receive play, again, we're gonna hide. This is hiding our original sprite. We're gonna set our size to 90, so it's gonna be a little bit bigger than before. I remember 90, this one here is 70. So now we're gonna increase it so we can see it a little bit better. We're gonna go to these coordinates here, negative 106, negative 157. And again, we're gonna be using count letter. We're gonna reset it back to one. We're gonna wait 0.2 seconds before going to the front layer. That way it's above our previous sprite. So the sprite we just coded, we're gonna make sure that it's a layer above so we can see it over top. We go up here, go to the front layer, and then we're gonna use our counter variable and the length of player one name. And we're gonna do the exact same thing as we did before. So if we remember back over here, it's the exact same thing. We're gonna repeat the length of player one name. And of course we're using our count letter to count. And then we're creating clones of ourselves. And we can use the same bit of code over here whenever we start as a clone show, exact same thing. And we're creating clones and then increasing count letter. However, this time our X position is increasing by 12 each time. And then our Y stays the exact same. So again, this is really, really easy. We pretty much already did it before. So now if we play, I've already pretty much showed it to you. We can go over here. I'm gonna switch it to uh, Mr. Tomac again, question mark. Um, now if we play. You can see Tomek comes up just like here, and we have a nice little question mark here. Okay, so that's working here. It fits nicely in there. And now I think our icons and all of our little things, our doodas down at the bottom are pretty much finished now. We just have to make sure we set up player two, which is the exact same thing as before. So if we go over here, um, pretty much this code, you can just copy and paste it over. We go over here. Again, whenever we see game over, delete the clones. Whenever we receive player, we're gonna hide, set size, exact same thing. We're gonna go to 100 instead, x equals 100. Y coordinate is gonna stay the same at negative 157. We're gonna use count letter, a different variable. We're gonna have the weight again, so we can go to the front layer. And then the exact same thing, literally literally copy and paste it, just instead of using player two name and a different variable, okay? So that's really, really easy. Um, and I don't even need to show it to you guys, it's the exact same thing as before. So now we're so close to being finished. We only have to do a few bits left. We have to do a little bit more coding in Link. And then we have to, of course, duplicate it over to Kirby and all of that. And then we also have to finish our game over screen. And in fact, that's what we're gonna do right now. So game over, of course, is also covered by my um, not so handsome face, um, really bad hair. Um, so right next to the death effect, it's one over and it's called game over. So I'll go to the costumes. We actually have two different costumes. One if player one wins, and then we also have another one for player two. So all it is is just pretty much the, uh, the colors flipped and the names flipped too. So super simple. And we're gonna use those two costumes here. So whenever we receive overall start, we're gonna go to the back layer and then hide. So really, really easy. And then eventually when we receive game over, um, which is broadcasted when we die, when we run our lives, that's broadcasted in our other separate sprites. Uh, we're gonna code a little bit more in them later for our actual game over part. We're gonna wait a little two second delay. That's gonna give us enough time to show our death effect and things like that. We're gonna stop all of our sounds, so we're gonna stop background music, everything. Then we're gonna start this VC menu narration no contest. So all that's gonna say over here, no contest. just really, really easy, it's gonna say no contest. Um, it doesn't display this every single time in Smash Bros, but I like it when it does, so we're just gonna display it every single time, really easy. Uh, we're gonna go here to 73, x equals 73, y equals one. We're gonna set our size to 135, go to our front layer, and then show. So, I'll go over here. Oh, whoa, we actually have to finish our game. So quickly before we do that, if you guys remember at the very, very start, I said on our first episode, we could switch our lives out. So for now, we're just gonna set player one lives to one. 
So this is gonna help us for testing. So let's go over here, we'll go back to our game over sprite. We'll start playing. Like this. We'll go over here. Um, again, I'm gonna Pikachu Link. So as you can see, our lives are actually still working. And that's because we actually tied our variables to the live counter and not to three. So that's another thing you should always make sure you do in programming. Go over here, we're gonna kill Link. Link's gonna die. Sec, eventually. There we go. So of course we have to get the game working. And there we go. So we have this guy here, now it's actually showing up. Um, we do later on have to code it so Pikachu will come up. Um, but that's really easy. Um, let's finish off the code here. So we know it actually shows up now. However, we also have to make sure that it shows to the right costume. So we have our two different costumes depending on who wins. So here, if player one lives equals zero, that means that player two won. We're gonna switch to costume player two winner. If not, that we if not, then we know player two lives equals zero, which means player one won. So we can switch to those costumes. Then we're gonna wait two seconds before starting our Smash Bros. game over music. So that's over here. Nice music over here. You guys can listen to it yourself. We're gonna have a little wait, then we're gonna hide, and then we're gonna rebroadcast overall start. And if you guys remember all the way from the top over here, that's gonna then go reset some of our variables, and then we can play over and over and over again. So, all right, that's our little game over screen. Let's go go over and quickly make sure it's working again. Um, but quickly before that, do that, we can actually quickly program in our little game thing over here. So that's the part that already showed up, because it's already connected. So whenever we see game over, we can go to our front layer, set size to 100%, switch to costume game. So this is all when, whenever we die, we want the little game, the big game text to come up. We're gonna go to zero, zero, show, wait three seconds before hiding. So now we can go over here. There, there, does it really matter? Like so, we can kill Mario really quick. Eventually, there we go. So now the game showed up just like there and we've switched the correct costume. We start playing our music like so. We have to wait a little bit. Dun, dun, dun. And then we're back to our title screen and the music starts playing again. And then we can click to continue and we can do everything all over again. So that's working fine just like that. We only have a few little things left to do. We're almost done with the entire game. I can't wait, I'm so excited. So with only two little things we have left, well, one of them's a little bit bigger, um, we're gonna start off, we're gonna go over to Link over here, and we're gonna add a little bit of code in here. So of course we already have all of our movement, we have everything else here, but now we're gonna add a little bit more code, it's super super easy, and that's for our game over screen. So as if you guys remember this part here, we just coded that, we wanna have it so we can actually show, let's say Kirby and Link for example, um, when you've won and when you've lost. So we're gonna go over to Link, we're gonna grab when we receive game over, we're gonna stop all other scripts in our sprite, so we have to stop everything. That way we still can't walk while we're being displaying our characters. Then we're gonna wait 2.1 seconds. That's gonna give us enough time for us to show our little game logo over here, down at the bottom, and to do our death effect and things like that. Then we're actually gonna run our main code. Now, since we're actually gonna take all of this code and we're gonna duplicate it all the way for each sprite. So if I look at Pikachu, who's already actually finished, as you can see, it's the exact same code I have in Link literally the exact same. So we're gonna duplicate this bit over here. So we have to have one little if loop and make sure that the person has actually selected link, seeing as everyone is gonna receive game over. So we're gonna check is player one if it's equal to one or is player two is equal to two. If it is, that means it's one of the players that we've been using. So we're gonna make sure we go to the front layer, we're gonna show and we're gonna switch costume to link stand. So go to our costumes, we're gonna go here, really, really easy. Then we're gonna run one more little loop in here. So if we're if 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 we're player one, so if it's one over here, we're also gonna check one other little thing in here, and we're gonna check if player one lives equals zero. So of course if player one lives equals zero, that means we died, so that means we lost and we were link and we were player one. So we're gonna set our size to 400. We're gonna go to negative 97, negative 113. That's gonna put us in that second thing, so that's gonna give the exact coordinates for this guy down over here, so put us right there. Yes, oh no, to put us over here, there we go. To put us, player two, it'll put us somewhere. I have it all worked out. Um, we'll go back over here. So it's gonna put us down at the bottom. Of course, these guys are already gonna go to the correct costume. So it's gonna put us down at the bottom there. If not, that means player one lives does not equal zero, which means it's higher than zero, which means we actually won. So we're gonna set our size to 800. We're gonna go to 106 and five. We're 
you're gonna point in direction negative 90, so we're actually gonna be pointing the other way. And let's make sure I get these screens right here. That means player one winner, so we can click here, and we're gonna have link displayed right here, like that. Perfect. Okay, so we have all this guy in here. Let me check that guy. And it's the exact same for player two. So if we're not player one, we already have loops in here. We know we have to be player two. So then we're gonna check for player two's lives. If we're equal to zero, that means we died. So we're gonna go almost the, yeah, the exact same coordinates here. If not, we won, we're gonna do the exact same thing. Then the last thing we're gonna do, now this little bit of code is always gonna run so long as that, so long we're, we're, so long as we're the actual player. So as long as we've actually used link, then this code over here is gonna run. And we're gonna set is player one back to zero. We're gonna wait 7.5 seconds. So we're gonna display it for a little while. And then last thing we're gonna hide. So let's actually see how this stuff works. Oh, we're gonna quickly go check, make sure our lives are still at zero. So let's go here, run some of our code. Go here, I'm gonna go link because we just did him. And for now, we're just gonna use Pikachu. Pikachu. Ready? Okay, so we're gonna get Link to die, so we're gonna get Pikachu to come kill him. Really easy. But uh Oh, not dead yet. Ba -da -ba -da. Come on, sometime today. There we go. So we have a little delay. And there we go. So we have Pikachu popping up right here, and of course Link died, so Link's gonna be at the bottom here. And we're gonna wait a little bit. And then it disappears, everything's reset back to zero, and we can play again. So, that's working fine. The only last thing we have to do is I have to actually finally show you how to make other characters. We've done all the programming we need now, so all of this is finished. Now all we have to do is actually come along and duplicate this over to Kirby and tweak literally one or two things. It's really, really easy. Okay, so I've just cleaned up a lot of the blocks in Link. We've finished all the code in here. Um, now it's really, really easy. So, we're gonna go here and all we're gonna do is we're gonna grab these bits of code and we're just gonna drop it inside Kirby. That's all we're gonna do. We're gonna drag and drop everything inside Kirby just like this. We're gonna keep going, make sure not to miss anything. Grab everything here, like so. And this guy. And we're gonna keep going and I'll be right back when everything has been dragged and dropped. Make sure you don't miss out any blocks. So we can cut this part here. Ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum. Please do not comment on my, my little singing. You're probably not even gonna see this anyway. Okay, and then here's the last part, the last block here. Drag that in there, and then everything has been transferred over. Now let's go over to Kirby, who's now gonna be a complete mess, just like that. We're gonna go here. Now here we're gonna right click, and then just click clean up all blocks, or clean up blocks, and we have all of the code in here. Now there's definitely some things we have to change, so I'm gonna go through all the stuff here. First things first, anything that we said switched costume, link stand, whatever, we have to make sure we go and we change that to Kirby standing. So we're gonna make sure it says Kirby standing. We're also gonna change it from player one select, we're gonna change it to two. So if all the numbers equals two, because we know that means it's Kirby. So one is link, two is Kirby, like that. We're gonna keep the point direction. Then our new X coordinates are going to be, our X coordinate is gonna be negative 168. And this is for player one. And then player two, this is our starting positions whenever we're, no, this is not a starting position. Our setup here is for when we're ever displaying Kirby down at the bottom. So if we're ever displaying Kirby here, these are the numbers we're inputting. So it's gonna be negative 168. And then the other one here is 105. We're also gonna change our Y coordinate here to negative 110, whoops, 110 like this. And that's already negative 110. Okay, so our there stays the same. That is not at all what I wanted to do. And then we're also gonna quickly go back and change this negative 190. I'm sorry, that's my mistake. And then the other one is gonna be 65, okay? So in the end, we're gonna have point direction 90 degrees. That stays the same. We're gonna have negative 190 and then negative 110. We're gonna have 65 and then negative 110, just like that. We're also gonna make sure our size, we're not gonna have it 500. We're only gonna have it 450. All of this can stay the same and we can keep going. Again, we're gonna keep is player one to zero. All of this stays the exact same. This is for the game over part. Again, we're gonna make sure we change these guys. Is player one, I don't know why that is a two. Do, do, do. Oh no, 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 that's fine. We can keep them like that because remember, is player one is specific to this person here. So it's either gonna be a one or two depending if they're player one or two. So that's fine, we can keep these guys here. We do not change both of them to a one or a two. We are gonna change this though to Kirby standing like that. 
we can keep all of this guy we are gonna have to change this so whenever we do game over we're gonna go and we're gonna do we're gonna set our size to 450 like this 450 that's for our game over and we're gonna change it from 800 to 600 so these guys are good both gonna be 600 here so that's for player one it's gonna be 450 um, sorry, if, if we lose it's gonna be 450, but if we win it's gonna be 600. Now we're also gonna have to make sure we change some of our coordinates. So we can keep our x coordinate here at negative uh, 97, and this guy here is gonna go to negative 113, so that can stay perfect. We can go down. Uh, we are gonna change this one though, this one's gonna be 120, and our other coordinate is gonna stay at 5. So we're gonna change this guy to 120, and everything else can stay the exact same. We can keep is player 1 to 0. Remember these are private variables. So these are not specific to link. So if I go here and I grab is player one, if I can find it, do do do, where is it? There we go. Is player one. Um, this guy here, you see here, it's a private variable for Kirby. So we can go down. Let's keep scrolling. When we receive play, that's fine. Stop scripts in our sprite. Now this is whenever we're starting. We're actually playing. We're gonna set our size to 450. I believe it's 450. No, sorry. We're going to set it to 170. We're going to set our size to 170 like that. Okay? And again, we're going to make sure player one select equals 2 or equals 2. Point induction here. We're going to have to switch up these coordinates. So again, we're going to keep the point induction 9 degrees. And then we're going to switch these guys over here to negative 168. And instead of negative 25, we're going to have it be negative 38. Now, this negative 38 is really important. We're actually going to be using this quite a lot. This negative 38 is our new y position. So most of the time our x position is going to stay the exact same. So I'm pretty sure x equals 130. That's going to stay the exact same, but we're going to change our y coordinate to negative 38 instead. Okay? And that's because our size is a little different, so it's not going to be the same as link. We can keep all these guys the exact same over here. Now there's one quick thing we're going to change. Instead of broadcasting start, we're going to scroll down. You guys may have to create the message. I'm going to have to create the message. It's going to be called start2. Start2. Okay, and we're going to use this broadcast. Um, you could have done this a different way. Um, we could have created a bunch more loops and a bunch more um, conditional statements. But instead, we're just going to use a different message for each of our characters. Keep it simple for now. Okay, and then of course, we're going to grab whenever we receive start 2 is player 1. Boom, boom, boom. This, of course, stays the exact same. However, this guy over here is going to change. Um, for starters, we do not have two attack sounds. We only have one attack sound. So we can go here and we can just completely take out attack over here. I'm gonna make sure I spelled it right. I did, we're good, attack. Now, now for some of our animate blocks here. So this is spacebar. This here is for attacking. Uh, we can keep these movement ones, the ones that are those, they can stay the exact same. However, we are gonna have to change this animate thing. Now to do this, this is the same for every single sprite for Pikachu, Bowser, and Mario. We can go over to our costumes. And now we're gonna have a look. Um, all of the things are labeled pretty well. So it's gonna say Kirby attack one and two, three, four. And we're gonna keep going all the way to the finish. So it starts at two and we're gonna look until it, the attack is over. So we're starting at two and we're ending at 28. So we're gonna animate from costume two all the way to 28 and that's us attacking. So now we have our walking animation. So we can go back, let's have a look. We're gonna walk from 29 all the way to 38. So we can go over here, we can grab this guy over here, 29 to 38. And we can change this guy also, 29, 38, and movement zero. This jump throw, we're gonna make sure we change the Y coordinate every single time, and that's negative 38. This guy's really important, it's gonna screw us up if we don't change that. And we're gonna switch costume to Kirby block. I think that's all the way at the bottom, there it is. And this one here should also be Kirby standing. Okay, now we're gonna have to do the exact same for this guy over here. We'll do this really, really quick. We're animating from 2 to 28. 2 to 28. Nope, that's for this one. 2 to 28 is here. And this guy here is from 29 to 38. Alright, we got this one more time. We'll do this really easy over here. Just duplicate it over. Like so, we can keep all this stuff like this. And remember, we're also gonna change this to negative 38. Okay, and again, we're gonna also have to change this guy to not Kirby standing. This is Kirby block down at the bottom. And this one here is Kirby standing. If I can click it, there we go. Okay, so that's this little block down here. I don't know why I clicked that. 
Um, our animate thing should be able to pretty much stay the same. Um, we'll quickly breathe through it. Go here, spacebar W, this all stays the same. Next, costume, player one attack stays the same. We are gonna have to go here, and instead of cause link, we're gonna have it cause Kirby. Um, it, pretty, it doesn't really matter, uh, I just want a different name for it. Cause Kirby over here. So whenever it says switch costume, cause Kirby, now we're gonna go here. Costume Kirby, and that's, um, so there we go, we're gonna put that guy in there. Um, we're also gonna go over here like this, and instead, we're not going to be checking if we're touching Kirby. We want to check if we ever touch Link. So we're going to have to make sure we switch that. And then all the others can stay the same. We'll keep going. Uh, remember, it's not cause Link. It's going to be cause Kirby. So we have to go find costume Kirby, wherever it is. There it is. And cause Kirby, like so. I don't think we missed anything. We probably did. We definitely missed something along the line. Let's go. Keep going. Of course, we're going to have to do the exact same again for this part here. Um, that can stay the same. Instead of cause link, we're going to use cause Kirby. If I can find it, there it is, like so. Instead of touching Kirby, we're going to check if we're ever touching Link because that's the other character. We copied it from Link. We can go here. This can stay the same. Again, we're going to switch this guy here to costume Kirby. Costume Kirby. Boom, boom, boom. And we're going to switch it to Kirby standing. Okay. These guys here can stay the same. Uh, start sound damage. We already have a damage sound, so that can stay the same here. Stop other sprit uh, spritz. So stop other sprites here. Um, this guy can stay the exact same as well. We're gonna switch to costume, and we're gonna go all the way to Kirby, and we have Kirby hit one, and we have Kirby hit two. Now some of these do vary. I think there are a few other little costumes. You guys can experiment around with this depending on what character you have. So there's Pikachu Bowser. Some of them it's a little different. Some of them maybe only have one costume. In which case you can just take out the other ones. We are gonna also want to make sure we go here and change this to negative 38, and this guy to negative 38, like so. Um, linking this number to our variable might be really helpful. That way we can always switch it, and whenever we're creating new characters, it would make things much much easier. Um, something that you notice whenever you code something and you look back at it, something you might change. But that's okay. We go back. We're gonna switch these guys again. Hit one, hit two over here. Um, this guy here hits one and standing just like that and again we're gonna change this guy 38 and we're gonna broadcast start two here so that should be everything oh we got to change these guys as well there's a lot of little things we got to make sure we also make sure we grab here and this definitely might not work the first time there might be something a little wrong we do have a jumping sound so those are all of our sound effects good jump throw Okay, we don't want to have a jump, we want our Kirby jump. So Kirby has a jump in here, jump one, like so. Keeps going down, this guy can stay the exact same. Uh, we have another Kirby, I'm pretty sure this guy's actually our blocking animation. So this, all it is is when he's like doing a double jump, he's gonna like go down a little before he goes up and jumps again. So we can keep that as a blocking animation, like so. Um, this guy here is Kirby jump one. If we're actually gonna use this, this guy we're gonna change to our block. Um, so this guy, it's, sometimes it'll be blocking some of the other sprites, sometimes we have other things. I get all the different sprites from different sprite sheets, so it's kind of a little different every time whether they have a blocking thing or not. Um, sometimes I have to actually edit in myself. Um, so it'll change from time to time, but you can definitely check it out on the actual website or on the actual Smash Bros. You can go, you can take a look and see what they used. So there's Kirby Block, but def definitely mix it up, try, try whatever you want. So keep that guy there, that's jump one, so that's our actual like extended jumping animation there. All of this can stay the exact same. If we're touching the edge, boom, 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 everything's fine here. Again, we have our jumping thing, jump again can pretty much stay the same. However, we are gonna go here and we're gonna add in one little thing. This is only specific to Kirby and we're gonna add in switch to costume, jump Kirby sideways. And we're gonna just take that guy there for now. I'm gonna duplicate this a few times, like so. There we go, there we go, there we go, and there we go. So we're gonna have our switching, our jumping sideways, that way we can actually jump around. There's another cool little animation for Kirby, like that. Oh, clean up the blocks a little there. Okay, we got those guys. Now this is our last bit over here. Our die can pretty much stay the exact same over here, but we also wanna change it to negative 38. And this one down here, we're gonna change to negative 38 before I forget, which I most definitely will. That is not negative 38. Like so, this can stay the exact same like that. Um, here, make sure you don't change the first one and we're changing our glide block instead. And we're gonna broadcast start two and broadcast start two. 
and that should be us done. Okay, let's give it a shot. This might not work. We might have to do a few more things. We might have missed something. I'll go here. Kirby. Oh, good. So Kirby's showing up now. So we can go Link. And we have Kirby there. So we're going to go play one as Kirby. And we'll use Link. Good. Kirby's actually in there now. And good. We can walk. Kirby is now walking. Kirby is blocking. Kirby is jumping. We're always going to the right spot. Like so. That's working good. We can block now. We can attack. Um, when I was testing this game, Kirby's attack animation is pretty long. If you guys want to make it shorter, that's fine with you. Now let's actually make sure we can go and we can attack. So let's go attack Kirby. Kirby's taking damage. That's good. Now we can... Oh, that's the wrong button. We're going to attack. There we go. That's working. Um, there is one thing we are going to change. If you notice here, Kirby can only double jump. Now, in the actual game, Kirby can do a lot more than just double jump. So, we're going to go all the way down to our jumping animation, if I can find it. Not our animate, our, not our hit, our jump right here. And we're going to go to our jumps here. So, this variable in here, under jump throw, we have a big long guy here. I'm going to change jumps to 10. So, when it's less than 10. Okay? So, now if we go back in our game like this. Like that. Kirby. Ready? Now, Kirby can jump a lot, lot higher. We're also going to test one other little thing. Make sure that's working. And that is that we can switch Kirby's color. So, that's working too. There's a lot of really cool little animation thing. Rather than creating a ton more costumes, I thought this would be a kind of cool way to do it. Like so. So, now Kirby's all cool and stuff. So, now we're actually going to die, so we're going to have Kirby die here, eventually, we'll kill Kirby. There we go, so Kirby's dying like that, perfect, and Kirby appeared down at the bottom. Perfect, we have Kirby working, that is sweet. Okay, so Kirby's now done, just like that here. Um, we finished all the coding for Kirby, and it was really, really easy, it was the exact same as Link, we just had to go along and change some other little variables. Now, if you're going to do the same thing, we have to do the exact same thing for Pikachu, Bowser, and Mario. Now, I'm not going to go step by step and show you all over again, because it's just the exact same thing, just with different numbers. However, up on screen, I am going to show you some of the different things that you do have to change, the different Y coordinates and the different things like that. So, you guys can see all them. So, starting with Pikachu, we're going to change the Y coordinate to negative 40. So, for Kirby, it was negative 38. So you're gonna go all over, you have to change all the different Y coordinates. That might be when we're doing our jumping animation and things like that. You're gonna go and change the in-game size to 100%. That's right at the start. And then the last thing, we're gonna change our jumps to be less than four. And that's in our jumping slash throwing block. And then for Pikachu, we also have to make sure in our game over broadcast, so whatever we do when the game finishes, we have to set our losing size to 300%, our winning size to 550%, our coordinates when we win are gonna be 120, and then y equals five. But then if we lose, they're gonna say the exact same as before. Then when we're setting up or when we're selecting our menu, we're gonna have x equal negative 186 for player one and x equals 65 for player two. The y coordinates are gonna say the exact same as before. And we're also gonna set our size to 350%. You guys should also remember to always switch all the costumes. So it'll be, for example, Pikachu standing rather than Kirby standing. And also make sure you switch all the broadcasts rather than being start to start three or to start four or start five, depending on which character. So that's it with Pikachu. I'm gonna put up Mario and Bowser. Feel free to pause the video and then go in and change all the coordinates it's the exact same as before, exact same as I just showed you. If you guys are unsure about anything, make sure to go and check out the real game, and there you can find a bunch of the other numbers and anything you're unsure about. Back to Ben. If you don't want to take your time, you don't want to go through all of them, you can just quickly go to our original one. So the original Smash Bros over here, this is the original one here. You can just go to Pikachu like this, and we can open up the little backpack dude over here, and we can just grab Pikachu and drop him in your backpack. 
and then we can go back to the original project like so and then you can literally just take Pikachu out of your backpack plop him in there and he'll work just fine so it's up to you depends if you want to be lazy or not or you want to go you want to do all of that either way um, no foul no harm we're all good um, and that's pretty much us done now we have our full game working um, let's go in here you know we'll hide some of our variables we'll be fancy like this we hide this guy hide this guy hide this guy and let's make sure all of our game is working fine this is pretty much us done now I'm pretty sure we don't have anything left all of our characters are showing we can click on these guys um, we can fight them of course I have Mario and everyone else set up already um, we can go back we can change our, our three lives and stuff but I think everything is done if you guys manage to stick to the end finish to code everything well done I know I certainly would have been able to um, perfect good job guys um, I hope you had fun with the tutorial and I'll see you next time um, I don't know what we're building next see ya